Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. So if the game is easy, each player will pick a character with a unique power. You put all the characters in San Dimas at the number of players. So you're playing a two-player game, it'd be on two. Four-player game would be four. Each of these dials will be set in a random location, as will the historical figures. You shuffle up the Rift deck, and you are ready to go. In order to win, the players must take all the historical figures back to the place listed on their cards. So that'll be a location, and then get the Rift down to zero, and they will win the game once they do all the historical figures, and all of these Rifts are down to zero. The players lose if the San Dimas marker ever gets to 20, or the Rift deck runs out, you cannot draw a card when you need to. So that's the win and lose conditions. On your turn, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a Rift card and do what it says. For the most part, it's gonna make certain locations move up on the Rift dial. As you can see here, move Orleans up one, move Athens up one. Some of these will be good things. This will let you look at the top three cards of the deck and put them back in any order you want, or reduce San Dimas down by one. So these are things that we'll do. Now, if you have one that's like in a red part right here, so if you move uh, Austerlitz up one and it happens to be in red, then you would do this. If it's not in red, you would not do that. If it's already been fixed, i.e. the historical figure has been sent back and the Rift is down to zero, then you would just draw a new Rift card. And that's what this gray part means down here. So you can see there are plenty of these to kind of go through. If it ever has a green, same thing as a red, you move New York up two. If it's in the green, you move San Dimas up two, and et cetera. If you have something like this with a tool booth, it will tell you that everybody will go to this location. So you draw one of these at the beginning of a turn and you do what it says. Second thing you do is roll your dice. Everybody will start out with three yellow dice unless you earn more. Well, how can you earn more? If you look here on the historical figures, if you're able to pick one of these guys up, this guy would give me a blue die and a free move action. Now, some of these, like Charmaine, will give you a blue and a black die, although it says brown on here. The black die is a negative die that has blank sides or a B. Bogus is bad, so you want to make sure that you don't have those. But if you have any character that has a black die, you must use it. The max amount of die you can roll in a turn is four. So what you're going to do in your turn is you're going to roll these dice, and these dice are going to give you your actions. You always have one free reroll. You can go back in time and reroll one time, but you must reroll all of the die. Now, if some, one of your characters has this icon right here, this icon lets you reroll just one of your die. So if you get a one bad result, you don't have to risk the rest. That can be quite handy. So what do these do? The bogus, which is B, will allow you to, it's a negative effect, whatever location you're at, the riff will go up one. So if you're in San Dimas, you go up one. If you happen to be over here, then this riff would go up one. And that's a negative thing that would occur. You do not want the riffs to go up. So if the riffs ever get to 10 and you need to move it up again, then you would move San Dimas up instead of this area. Remember, if you get to 20, you will lose. So bees are bad and not good. The phone booth is easy. That's a move. So you can move from location to location and you would just follow these blue lines. So if you were here in Vienna, I could move up this line to, to New Mexico, or I can move over here to San Dimas, but I could not move to Castle because there is not a blue line going from there to there. You also have this sign, which is your interact. This is the one that you'll be utilizing the most. This will allow you, if you're at a location, you're able to pick up the historical figure and put it on your player sheet. Then you would take the historical figure's card, and now as long as you're carrying him, you will get a blue die on your turn, and you would have a free move action, and he would go down on your personages over here. So what you're trying to do now is trying to get Babe Ruth over to New York. So I picked him up in Vienna here, and let me see where New York is on the table. Oh, great, it's right here. So if I had a move action, I can move up here, spend an additional interact, and I could deliver him to that location. So I would drop Babe Ruth off there, and then I would no longer have access to his abilities. This card would be discarded off to the side, and then what we would do is we would be trying to uh, decrease the dial of the location that he's in. So if I'm able to get New York uh, down to zero, then what you would do is you'd flip this over and it would say fixed. And if it's fixed and you're the one that did that, you'd pick him back up and you would leave this side uncovered and you would get a pink die every time. Now the pink die is really nice because it has the E on it, which is excellent. That's a wild. That lets you do whatever you want, which will normally be interact or move. So this is a much better die you can have. And you're gonna gain that die by 
putting these people back in their time period and fixing the rifts. And that's a lot what you're doing. Once it's fixed, it kind of can't be affected. There is a card or so in the rift deck that will undo a fix, but it's very, very rare. For the most point, if you go to this and let's say this Orleans is already fixed, then you would go down here and just draw additional rift deck. Well, that can be, you say, hey, that's not too bad, except for if this deck runs out, you will lose the game. The only other little tweak to the game are these objectives. So at the beginning of the game, you're gonna have an objective card that will be given to you and you're gonna have this ability over here. So you have a free move maybe, or maybe a free interact every turn. But you're also gonna have it on this side. So what this is gonna let you to do is, let's say this one right here. If you get Socrates and you're in Washington, DC, then at the end of your turn, you have accomplished this. You move San Dimas back one, and then on you'll have this free move action. So that can be really fun. So like this one, you need to get Napoleon to Castle and to Austerlitz and to San Dimas, move San Dimas back two, and you get in everything. So you get an excellence. So you can do uh, anything you want. Uh, so this will be a one-time reward when you accomplish it, and this down here will be an ongoing power you have. It's not really clear from this, but that's kind of how that it works. Once again, you need to get everybody back to the historical location based on where it says on their card. You need to get the rifts down to zero by spending Interact. Once you do that for all the locations, you win. If the San Dimas marker ever gets to 20 or the rift deck, you need to draw a card and you cannot, you would lose the game. And that's how you play Bill and Ted's Riff in Time, a most excellent board game.